Hello and welcome back to Death for All, and we are here with Mr. Pelasaur attempting to defend against an overwhelming Western Empire force. Now, obviously, we have to bear in mind that we have some pretty bad reinforcements. I have actually just been looking at them and I've been thinking, okay, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is not looking good. Let's just say that, because look at this guy and this guy. Yeah, both of those people... They're not really going to be that useful for us. But anyway, there is a new option. Someone actually mentioned this as well to me in the comments. And I uh, I, I actually I got to say, I didn't, I didn't see this before. I did not see this. So I am extremely excited to try this out. If it's actually going to be somewhat useful to us. I have no idea whether it's going to be. But we're just going to cross our fingers and hope. Maybe the Azurai are going to actually appear with one of their armies or something like that. And that is highly unlikely as well, to be honest. But, well, I, I guess we're just going to see. We're just going to see what happens. Because if they do decide to build any siege engines, then we have the opportunity to ambush them, as you can see right here. That is going to be what will happen if they do decide to build anything. Are they not? Wait a minute. They didn't... Oh, no, 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 no. They, They've got a battering ram. They've got a battering ram. Okay. So, amusingly enough, we actually have some catapults. So, this is going to be interesting. Okay, so we did not get the opportunity to ambush. As you can see, the option was still grayed out. So, obviously, we don't have the ability to do that. However, maybe in the future we will be able to. Anyway, um, yeah, I actually have no idea what to really do here. I guess we'll just put Soren as the archers... Um, who's actually good at, at infantry right here? I don't, I don't see too many people. Oh, this guy, I guess, is relatively good at infantry, so I guess we'll do that. And this fellow is pretty good at... Well, this guy's actually better at infantry than his, his friend. So, yeah, we'll just do that. And otherwise, the cavalry, well, doesn't really matter. I suppose Bruce will be okay there. And we have some more archers here. Who's good at archery? This fellow, I suppose. And there we have it. All right, let's do it. Oh, I have a horse. Why is my horse spawning right here? Well, this is a bit funny, isn't it? Okay, I'm not entirely sure where they put me here. But anyway, um, yeah. So I'm very much hoping that our AI friends, the ones that are actually controlling the catapults and various other defensive structures, will be able to destroy the enemy's battering ram. If they can destroy the enemy's battering ram, we are basically going to win. There's, there's nothing else. There's nothing else to it. We are going to win this no matter what. Maybe I can get some nice little kills here with my little bow. I don't know whether it's going to work because, well, let's just say that I, I don't hold out too much hope for this. Whoa, my uh, my friend here just got absolutely laid out. A bit worried about that, got to say. But maybe I can... Oh, look at that. I'm actually hitting people. Wow, I'm surprised. Okay, can we get some more? Oh, yeah, these guys... Yeah, so I obviously took a look at the opponent's uh, composition and things like that. And, well, let's just say it's pretty scary. It is very, very scary indeed. Ooh, look at that. Massive amounts of kills. Massive amounts of kills coming in from our fire catapults. Only hopeful that the fire catapult will start to actually attack the battering ram instead of attacking forces. But, well, I suppose attacking forces is not all bad but I would very much prefer them to attack properly because let's face it if they don't have the battering ram this is basically a victory for us the battering ram is the main source of their uh, well opportunity to attack us and to even capture this but it's highly unlikely if they uh, get that destroyed that they'll be able to achieve victory here so very much hoping that I might be able to at least, uh, 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 hello, hello, I can actually eliminate that guy potentially. Yes, yes, ah, fantastic. Look at that. Okay, can we get some more kills there though? That is the question. Yes, we can. We may maybe can. Uh, yeah, now I have no more arrows. Where is an arrow barrel? Where is an arrow barrel when you need one? Oh, it's all the way over here. Of course it is. I maybe would have benefited more from going through the little battlements area there and just going on the other side and picking up some more from that side but oh well never mind okay we got some more enemies over here might as well do a little bit of shooty shooty action here as you can see we're actually doing some pretty good damage with our fire catapults gotta say i'm actually very impressed that we've been able to eliminate as many as we have 
These guys are way too defensive in my opinion. However, Pelosaur has gained a level, even if we're getting pretty unlucky with this. You know what? Should I try picking this up? Let me try picking this stone up. Because here's the thing. If we take this and we drop it on someone that is attempting to break down the uh, the door, I'm not entirely sure if that's even going to work, to be honest. I don't think so. The only time that's going to work is if we actually do it from... Uh, no, not from here. See, now that's the point. That's not going to work. Uh, but I think if I go downstairs... Yeah, if I go downstairs and I do it from here... Because there's no doubt going to be a, a gap in the floor, right? There should be a gap in the floor. Look at how much damage our people are doing with their catapults. It's actually pretty crazy, yeah. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. This place is where we want to drop the stones. So I'm not sure if we're even going to be able to do that. But let's let's try it out. Because... Okay, that... Uh, why am I such an imbecile? I don't know. But yeah, whatever the case. Oh, yeah, that was some nice damage. Yeah, can we get some more of that, please? Nice. Oh, I'm killing my own people. Wonderful. Uh, that sounds like a great idea. Okay. Thankfully, <laughs> that was actually some pretty good damage. I've actually never done that before, amazingly enough. I have never, ever done that before, by the way, because I was just like, ah, I'm, I'm, you know, busy on the battlements or something like that. But now it seems as though, uh, yeah, it seems as though the enemy is not even bothering to go over there. So I'm just going to put the... Oh. Well, never mind. I actually wanted to drop the stone on the floor, but apparently it just explodes. Okay, good to know. Anyway, let's just take a quick look at and see exactly what is even happening here, because it feels to me like the enemy is pretty much done. Um, yeah, as you can see, our catapults are just continuing to fire against them, and they seem to be destroying a great many of the enemy. So I am extremely pleased about that. Very surprised, actually, that they are still being so passive. You can see here that they're actually attempting to come up the ladder now. Which is obviously not a good idea. For any reason. And we're just going to continue shooting them in the face. Because that's what we can do. And we're going to do a lot of damage as a result of that. And they seem to be retreating. They seem to be retreating. I'm actually not entirely sure if they're going to, you know... For, oh, no, no, they are. They are fully going for the retreat. Okay, that's perfect. I'm just going to actually shoot a couple more while they are retreating. Maybe I'll be able to get a couple of extra kills. Maybe a couple of extra bits of experience. And there you go. Okay, I think that's probably going to be all I'm going to get. But yeah, look at that. Very significant. You can see here... Wow, we actually... I believe we killed... The army leader. Yes, we did. I'm not entirely sure. Did I kill the army leader with my stones? I'm not entirely sure what happened there. But yes, as you can see, they have now disbanded, which is absolutely perfect. Never would have expected this to happen. Such a, it's such an incredibly positive result from our efforts there. Very surprising, actually. I'm not going to... Oh, yeah, I, I am actually going to put 10,000 in here. I didn't, even, I didn't even mean to do that, but okay. Anyway... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I need to find a, an empire, empire um, companion. That is, that is what is primarily going to help us. Anyway, uh, plus fifty percent renown gain from battles. That sounds like a really good idea in my opinion. So probably going to be going for that. We've got some more athletic skill as well. I'm probably going to be going for this. Powerful is plus four percent damage with melee weapons. Now, here's the funny thing about this particular perk here. I'm not going to go on a huge rant about it, but I'm just generally going to say that I personally think that sprint is very good if you are a duelist character as you can see when you have no shields and no ranged weapons equipped so in other words if you are literally just going to be using a one-handed sword or you're going to be using a two-handed sword or any two-handed weapon for that matter then you are going to have a wonderful time with this this is a really really good thing to go for if you want that there is another perk later on down the line. I'm not entirely sure if it's in the athletics tree or if it's in some other tree. But from what I remember, there is one that actually increases your movement speed when you don't have any weapons at all equipped. I think it's in the roguery tree, actually. And I personally think that that is a bit stupid. I, I, I don't know why there is a... Um, yes, this. 
I have no idea why this is actually a perk, and I don't know why this has such a high requirement as well. 250 skill to be able to get this. And you just think to yourself, well, why do you want plus 10% combat movement speed while no weapons or shields are equipped? In other words, nothing. You have nothing equipped. No, 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 no ability to kill anyone or do any damage or anything like that. So very strange, in my opinion. It's obviously for running away, I would assume. But why does that matter, you know? Why does running away matter? I don't know. But um, yeah, it, I mean, the other thing is relatively good. Plus 30% escape chance when imprisoned by mobile parties. That's obviously reasonably good, I guess. But dash and slash, let me tell you, probably one of the greatest damage abilities possible for a bandit-based character. Really, really useful. That plus 50% damage bonus from speed while on foot, really, really nice. But the other thing, ah, don't, don't even get me started on that. Anyway, we're going to take powerful right there. And we're going to be going for plus 10%. No, no, no. We're going to be going for, well, I'm not even going to be using thrown weapons. So this is basically useless. Although, to be fair, I am going to be going for flexible fighter. Because if we are a captain of a particular formation of ours, then plus 15 to control skills of our infantry and plus 15 vigor skills of archers are really going to make a huge difference. So that's what we're going to be going for here. And I do have a focus point to spend, so I will probably be putting it in archery because I want that to be level up. You know, I want it to level up relatively nicely. So let's see how it goes. If they decide to go back in here, then I will obviously go and attack them. Or should I? Hmm. Mm, little bit worried about that now. A little bit worried about that. Not entirely sure. Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, I did install this new mod. Uh, you can check out the link in the description. It's called Buttered Equip, I think. Butter Equipped or something along, the, along those lines. It was recommended to me by someone in the comments, and I got to say... I have not used it yet, but I am very interested to see how it works. So if I click this, there we go. It literally just gave me uh, new horse armor, apparently. Yes, it equipped me with new horse armor, which is slightly better. So that's actually really nice. And otherwise, what we can do, I actually have basically nothing in my inventory right now. But if I click my party right here, you can see that it's just messed around with a couple of um, pieces of horse armor. And we also have a new weapon for Soren here as well, a new weapon for Rustica. And we can actually take a look at her as well. And you can see here that she's actually using a much better mace. So I'm liking this mod so far. I think it's actually looking pretty cool. And you can also do things like lock things with these little icons here. So these don't get, um, don't get changed no matter what you do. So in my opinion, that's very cool. Anyway... Let me actually just exit here and see exactly what's going on. Okay, I think personally I might be able to win against these guys in battle. Karath is actually... No, Karath, why? Oh, I, did, I wanted to assist him. I wanted to assist him. Okay, he's only gotten taken prisoner, so I should be able to rescue him potentially. Okay, so we're actually up against a pretty significant army here. I'm kind of worried about this actually now. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so they only have archers... They have low tier infantry, low tier infantry, basically nothing, and basically nothing. Okay, so I am actually thinking that we might be okay here. And, uh, well, let's try it out, shall we? This is, uh, this is as good a time as... Oh, dear. Oh, no. Uh. Okay, yeah, this is not exactly what I wanted to do. This is a nighttime battle. I know, I know. It's very hard for you to see, and I do apologize for that, but there's not much I can do. Hopefully you can see well enough. That's all I can say. Anyway, let's see if I can maybe do some damage to the enemy's cavalry here, because they are going to be the main thing that will actually do anything to us, I think. Although, to be fair, I do have a lot of cavalry myself. We have a pretty significant number of cavalry, actually, and theoretically that should get us the victory. But... That's just in theory, of course. That's just a theory. Let's see if we can actually bait these guys into fighting us or attempting to chase after us in some way or another. Do a little bit of damage to some of them. Yeah, not too bad, I guess. Not too bad. Uh, yeah, it, it's very frustrating, actually, to be fighting in the nighttime because I can barely see where my arrow is going right now. I can, I can just estimate a little bit as to where it's going. 
And uh, all things considered, you really do not want to estimate where your arrow is going. You want to make sure you know exactly where it is so that you can uh, change where you're aiming and you can do a little bit better the next time you shoot. But uh, yeah, th this time around, it's very difficult for me to see this, but I'll try my best. I'll try my best and uh, hopefully that's going to be good enough. As you can see here, we're maybe going to be able to eliminate this guy at least. Oh no, he's got a shield. Of course he does. And he's actually using it relatively nicely. There we go. At least we eliminated him. Not too bad. Let's go over for my one-handed weapon here for a second. Because I think that might do a little better for us. Nice. Oh. <laughs> oh my. Okay, these guys literally... Oh, oh, yeah. They are just completely outmatched by the fact that we are using a one-handed in comparison to their polearm. Of course, as you might expect, that is exactly what is happening here. Because one-handed versus a polearm in close quarters combat, it's no contest. No contest whatsoever with that. And maybe I can just continue to deal good damage here. Uh, not bad, not bad. Even this is actually kind of difficult in the nighttime. Even this, I'm having difficulties timing my swing because I can barely see my, my sword. I cannot imagine how it would be in a real life situation to actually be fighting at nighttime. I feel like that would be really, really difficult. Especially if it's just pitch black and there are no lights or torches or anything like that going on. Maybe you could use the moon's light if it's at night, of course. Very much depends on if it's a uh, clear sky or not. But uh, most of the time, who knows? It depends where you're fighting, of course. If you're fighting in England, then you're probably going to have rain and clouds and, you know, wonderful stuff like that. Unless it's obviously during summer. But uh, yeah, it's even then. Even then. Okay, so let me see if we can maybe... Oh, oh, hello. No, don't get stopped now, please. No, no. These guys are all incredibly low tier, so I shouldn't really have to worry too much. That was the reason why I kind of took a look at their composition before we headed in. Because I was thinking to myself, okay, well, if I have to head in, am I going to have to be scared of charging in with my one-handed? And the answer to that is apparently not. Apparently not. It seems relatively simple for us to eliminate pretty much everyone here. And we managed to catch all the vassals that defeated Karith as well. So that means we should be able to rescue him from this. And we did end up losing around 17 units, which i got to say is kind of sad. Oh, Aretha actually died. Another one actually died. Very, very surprising, actually, that we're seeing so many deaths. But that just means we're getting lucky, I guess. That means we're getting lucky. Anyway... Uh, someone actually did mention to me that if you let prisoners go, and this is actually something that I, um, I kind of forget about. I kind of forget about this because they don't tell you the amount of skill points that you get anymore. They used to tell you how much you gained. And then there was a mod that came out, which was, uh, called something like, um, you know, skill gain experience or something like that. And that basically showed or it outputted uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the information into the text log. So you'd actually be able to see what kind of skills you're leveling up and how much you are leveling them up. And that's the reason why I know certain things about how to level up your archery skill or your thrown weapon skill a little bit quicker or your riding skill a little bit quicker and so on and so forth. Because that mod gave me the information. However, now I don't have that mod installed and I, I have no idea because the, the developers actually made it impossible for you to see how well your skills are leveling up. Unless you download that mod again, I'm not entirely sure if it's been updated or anything like that. But yes, anyway, someone did mention that letting them go gets you more charm skills. So I'm actually going to be attempting to do that as much as I can. It does actually also give us the ability to potentially fight them again and again. And why did this happen right now? <laughs> wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Your relation is decreased by minus two. Is that pi? Was that pi right there that actually just appeared? I have no idea. But Whatever the case, we're just going to be uh, rescuing as many troops as possible. Actually, I don't even want any of these troops. I don't want the Imperial troops if I can help it. So we're just going to be letting the Imperial troops go for the most part. The Batanian Fian Champion. I'll keep the Batanian Fian Champion just because it's such a such a cool unit. And otherwise, we're just going to be taking some Master Archers here. Um, we can actually swap out some of these lower tier Azurai as well. Don't really see the necessity to keep those around too much. And uh, for some reason, I don't know why the recruit, the automatic recruiting thing didn't give me the uh, the highest possible unit 
tears from the Azurai. Seems a bit weird to me, but okay. Never mind, never mind. And we can take some prisoners as well. Obviously, prisoners not really going to be that useful for us right now, but yeah, that's that's perfectly fine. Let's just level everyone up that we can. I need to get some more horses, actually. And let's take all of this. Then we can actually equip ourselves. As you can see, we already got a uh, new blade here. However, I'm not entirely sure whether I actually like this because it has a different length. So I'm actually going to be locking this instead. And then we're actually just going to be equipping our party with everything they can equip. And we'll see how that goes. And as you can see, Soren's obviously got that step war bow. I should really uh, lock my noble bow as well, just in case. You never know whether that's going to um, have some problems and someone's going to steal it or something like that. Hopefully not. Anyway, there we go. And Aretha did die in battle, as we know. But us letting all of those people go, did we get a lot of charm skill? Yeah, I think we did. I think we did, right? I think we were at 155 and now we're at, we're at 171. So that's actually not bad. My bow skill seems to be leveling up super slowly, actually, all things considered. Let's take Mounted Archery, because that's going to reduce the accuracy penalty, of course. And otherwise, apart from that, we should probably take larger shield protection against projectiles, just in case we go into a siege and we're up against, you know, the Batanians or something like that. That's always going to be very, very useful. All right, so apart from that, let's just ransom our prisoners real fast, and then we'll go into the trade screen here, because I do need some cash. That's the funny thing. I do need some cash. So, uh, yeah, I've obviously done the auto-equip thing, so everyone has upgraded equipment, and I don't actually need to do that any further. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to sell everything I can. And, uh, yeah, that was actually um, maybe the best arrows in the game. Someone told me that there were the best arrows in the game um, in my inventory in the previous episode, and I didn't notice it. So I'm very much hoping that may maybe, you know what, maybe I can find them here. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Is, is, is Are these them? Are these them? Because as far as I'm aware, these are maybe the second best arrows in the game. I'm not entirely sure, but perfectly happy to just buy these. I mean, I don't really have a problem either way if they are the, the best or not. I don't I don't know. Personally, I don't really care too much, but it's pretty cool that we, we found them. I mean, pretty easy to buy them back after all anyway. And as you can see, look at that. We're still getting 11,000, which is actually pretty nice. And uh, yeah, we're just going to do that. There we go. Fantastic. All right. So what shall we do now? That is the question. Shall we go hunting for a couple of vassals? Well, we can. Don't really want to fight them at night, though, if at all possible. I'd like to fight them a little bit uh, a little bit more in the daytime. Corinios is right here. He's limping away from the battlefield. I'd like to... Wait a minute. You know we're at war. I can't just let you go. Okay, What? Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is Corinios actually dead? Yes, he is. Okay, he's actually dead. So they don't even have a leader. That's the reason why, why they were talking about them not having a leader any further. Because their, their vassal, their lord, has been killed. So, yeah, that is exactly what's happening here. Okay, so, um, yeah, we don't have any of our commanders or anything like that right now because they are currently... Uh, injured, as far as I'm aware, so they are obviously not going to be leading these various formations, which is actually kind of strange. Usually a horse archer or an archer in general like Sauron is not really going to get attacked and not really going to have too many issues with survivability, but apparently she did get eliminated for some unknown reason. Maybe was, um, you know, harassed by a couple of uh, a couple of cavalry or something along those lines. That's That's the most likely thing to have happened. This sword is absolutely amazing though, I've got to say. If you're looking for a one-handed sword and uh, you want to use it on, on horseback, this is literally the, the best one, in my opinion. This is the best one because it gives you 125? Is it 125 reach or something like that? I, I'm not entirely sure, but it gives you a massive amount of reach, let's just say that. And that is more than enough for you to be able to hit enemies while they are on the ground as infantry and while you are mounted. because. I've said many, many times in the past when I first started playing this and more recently as well that I'm not very good at the mounted melee combat. Mounted melee combat is one of my weakest points in the game and this sword makes up for it. It really does. It makes everything so much easier for me and that, well, <laughs> it makes everything easier for me, he says, as he gets uh, almost murdered by a uh, recruit. Yeah, but um, that's the point. Usually, 
The main issue for me is the attack angle. Because uh, they've changed the attack angle from how it was in Warband. And uh, it was very difficult for me to get used to it. I'm still having issues, as you can quite clearly tell. I'm still having issues getting used to it. But the ability to use a longer reach weapon has basically solved about 80-90% of my problems. And obviously there's always going to be those moments where the AI is just significantly better at timing than I am. And as a result, you're going to get a bit of a poke in the face with a very, very sharp dagger or something along those lines. And, you know, then bad things are going to happen. However, that's my point. You have those kinds of situations and then you're able to minimize the bad things that potentially can happen because you're obviously then in a situation where you can, you know, you can do things a little bit better. You can uh, make sure that you're working out as much as possible. You're trying to prevent these kinds of damages from being taken. So that that's kind of what I'm what I'm talking about with that. Anyway, um, charm skill. Let's see here. Plus 20% relationship bonus when you pay more than the minimum amount in barters. Plus one extra relationship when you increase relationship with cruel lords or merciful lords. 100% influence return when a supported proposal fails to pass. Either one of these doesn't actually matter to me, in my opinion, but I'd like to get more relation with merciful lords, if at all possible. I think that's probably a, a better idea than pretty much anything else. And I could, of course, also go for another point in leadership here if I wanted to. But I'm actually not entirely sure whether that is even worth it because there are a lot of other um, a lot of other skills that I might like to go for instead. I mean, this is pretty good. Plus 100% to battle morale to troops when you kill an enemy in battle. That's always actually pretty useful. But I think in general, maybe it's not even going to make that much difference, all things considered, because we all we are already getting a... A significant amount of kills. So I'm actually just going to go for uh, writing skill. I guess I'll just go for another point of writing skill. I am really, really sad that we only get one attribute point for every four levels we gain. It feels like such a, a limiting amount in comparison to what you would normally get if you were using a mod like Chaos's Tweaks or something like that to give you that extra boost of attribute points. And I'm not even talking about getting an attribute point every every level or even every other level, but I'm thinking, I don't know, every three levels I think would probably be slightly more lenient because as it stands right now once you get to level 20 you've only had four attribute points I mean uh, well for every four levels I mean if five attribute points I mean yeah if I can actually do math anyway yeah the point is you get such a significantly lower amount of attribute points than you do focus points and it makes you very, it feels very limiting, as I said. It feels very limiting for you as a character to literally just gain such a small amount of attribute points. No. And obviously, I understand. Okay, I get it. They don't want you being some kind of superhuman, um, you know, beast that can spec into absolutely every single, you know, every single avenue of... Uh, of skill, you know, they don't want you being good at medicine, good at steward, good at charm, good at everything else in the entire game. Of course, they don't want you being good at everything. However, I'm barely having enough to be able to upgrade my most basic skills. I can't even upgrade my most basic things like, for example, vigor or control or anything like that. I mean, I leveled up my social skill to seven and that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's all I've been able to do. And then my vigor and all that other stuff is really, really low. In comparison, uh, if I were to play Warband, I'd be able to get all of my attribute points to a relatively good level. So I could get them, you know, for example, the standard build is something like, you know, 24 strength, 18 agility. And I could get my um, charisma to around 15. And I could just leave my intelligence where it is in, uh, in Warband, that is. But... In this game, it's significantly more difficult to actually get those levels. And it makes things pretty pretty harsh, actually, all things considered. Anyway, let's just try and do a little bit of damage with these new arrows. And uh, maybe we can actually do a little bit of something with leveling my riding skill up as well. It's actually quite nice that a lot of these people have been damaged already. So I can actually just eliminate them in one hit. Okay, we got to be careful. I cannot literally just stand there, can I? That's not a good idea. Oh, nice. We actually eliminated that Imperial Sergeant Crossbowman. That was that was a wonderful 
Wonderful hit. Any single time we can eliminate one of those, especially considering they're super, super deadly from range, we want to make sure that we don't take too much damage. Oh, yes. Too much damage from them is going to just spell our absolute demise. Yes. It's going to be terrible. Anyway, there we go. We ended up losing quite a few, but look at this. Look at this. We're getting so much influence right now. So much influence for just dealing with these guys super easily. This guy didn't actually get killed, which is a bit... A bit sad. I mean, I'd like to eliminate our opponent as much as possible. And I'm actually... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me see. Any tier uh, tier 3s? Yeah, this guy will take the Palace Guard. Instead, we can take some prisoners as well. And let's just move on. And, uh, yeah, I, I, did you see that, that thing that happened before? Because um, these guys, right? The Banu Kild, they are a Karath's clan and we are at minus 99 relation with him as far as i'm aware that was a bug because uh, i caught that on on camera as you could see um if you go back in the video you would see that we literally lost i think it was 2.4 billion relation or something like that or it might have been 24 billion i don't even know they were there were just a lot of numbers so i have no idea how much it actually was but it was such a significant amount that it automatically reduced his relation even though i rescued him by the way i did rescue him and it has reduced it all the way to minus 99 so i am now in a situation where we're just like well um why do you hate me again sir and he was like oh yes it's because you rescued me that one time yeah a bit a bit weird isn't it yeah a bit strange that must be a bug of some kind i really wish they would fix those things anyway I think that's probably going to be it for this episode. We were successful in defending Lagater against an overwhelming opponent. And hopefully we will be able to continue our attack against the Western Empire as much as we possibly can. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.